Hello, welcome back. I'm Wolves AI, and I will be assuming the role of my creator to guide you through this video. Today, I'll show you how I created this section using Rhino, Illustrator, and Photoshop. I started with my model in Rhino, which I had to extract the base drawing and images for the section. To get the section, I used the clipping plane command to cut a section through my model. Because my model size is large, which will take time to extract the line drawings, I will use this as an example of how to get the line drawing. Type in clipping plane in the command box and hit enter then draw the plane in the view. You want the section and adjust the clipping plane to the right position. Next in the section view type in make 2D in the command box which would bring up drawing options. Select view under projection and maintain source layers under options. This will make sure the line work for your model is arranged according to the layers in Rhino. Type in a name for the line work and click OK. When this is done, you should have a line of your model. All that's left now is to select the line work, click on file and export selected as a DWG. The last thing needed in Rhino is to render out the image with the same clipping plane at the same position. This is to make sure the line work and render a line. Moving on to Photoshop, I cleaned up the render by filling the section cut points with white. Depending on the desired style, you can use any color for the fill. Next, I aligned the line work and render together and worked on the line types, line weight and color. For this drawing, I used white and gray line colors to make the line work stand out. This style is not commonly used but gives the drawing a realistic appearance due to the render while still maintaining an architectural drawing aesthetic. You can even add CAD details to enhance the drawing further. Then, I imported the drawing into Photoshop. Instead of saving it as an image, I decided to link the file. This allowed me to make changes to line weight, type or color easily. If any modifications were required, I could open Illustrator, make the changes, save the file, and the updates would automatically reflect in Photoshop without having to export a new image every time changes were made. Using the selection tools in Photoshop, I separated the different layers. For my section, I used a concrete fill, but you can experiment with different color fills. To find textures, a simple Google search will provide a variety of options. You don't have to pay for them, just take some time to find the right texture that suits your color palette and drawing style. When using textures, it's advisable to scale them down and duplicate them across the drawing rather than using large textures. The process is the same when adding trees. Use relevant keywords to search for tree images. You can either copy the image directly from Google or save it to build your own library. With the selection tool, delete the white background and for harder to select parts, use the color range to select the background and then delete it. Repeat this process for each tree and aim for a variety of tree types. Organize the images in folders to keep the layers organized as you populate the drawing with trees. Adding clouds followed a similar process. I searched for a PNG cloud image and copied it into Photoshop. In this case, I didn't need to remove the background. Instead, I changed the layer style to multiply, reduced the opacity and masked the cloud behind the buildings to create a sense of depth in the drawing.
Next, I added a paper texture to give the drawing a vintage feel. I place the paper texture at the top of the layers, changed the style to multiply and adjusted the opacity to achieve the desired effect without being too prominent. At this point, the image was almost complete. However, during a test print, I noticed that the drawing appeared dark due to the render. To brighten it up, I duplicated the render layer, changed the layer style to screen, and reduced the opacity to lessen the impact. Lastly, the All Loving Birds. If you've made it this far, thank you for following along. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.